in transport layer there are two types of protocol those are mostly used one is udp and the other one is tcp depending on the type of data that will pass across the network udp stands for user datagram protocol it is communication protocol that facilitates the exchange of message between computing devices in a network udp is a communication protocol used across the internet for specially time sensitive transmission such as video or audio playback or dns lookups it is faster way of communication but less reliable as lost data are not retransmitted across the network on the other hand tcp stands for transmission control protocol tcp is used in the transport layer after the data comes from the application layer through the presentation and session layer the 24 bytes header is added to the data and that header is known as tcp header today we are going to learn tcp header but before that let us understand the function of tcp that is transmission control protocol byte streaming is the process of converting bits into bytes uh, bits come from the application layer in continuous process and tcp collects those bits and convert those into bytes and further those bytes are grouped into segment this process is known as segmentation which is most important function of tcp therefore segment is a collection of bytes tcp is connection oriented service and it uses three way handshaking tcp is a connection oriented protocol which means a connection is established and maintained until the application programs at each end have finished exchanging messages the three way handshaking process involves the following it sends request to the receiver for establishing the connection the receiver acknowledges for the request that is being sent by the sender then the sender informs the receiver that the data will be sent in this way the three way hand shaking process ensure the reliability of the data that the full data will be received at the receiver end tcp support full duplex communication because both the sender and receiver ends can send data at same time once the connection is established piggybacking is another important process of tcp after receiving the packets sender receives acknowledgement of the data from the receiver instead of sending acknowledgement of each and every packet the receiver end can send single acknowledgement for a group of received packets the receiver waits until its network layer pass the next data packet the delayed acknowledgement is then attached to this outgoing data frame to reduce the network load another important function of tcp is error control tcp provides reliability using error control error control includes mechanism for deleting lost segment out of order segment corrupted segments 
and duplicate segments. Error control also includes a mechanism for correcting error after they are deleted so that the damaged packets can be identified and the same can be retransmitted across the network to the receiver end. Flow control is another important function performed by TCP. It basically means that TCP will ensure the limitations of the receiver end so that a sender is not overwhelming a receiver by sending packets faster than it can consume. TCP not only take care of the receiver range capacity but in order to control the congestion in the network TCP also take care of the network through which the data packet will be passed. Therefore, the major application layers protocol are rely on TCP such as World Wide Web, Email, Remote Administration, FTP, SSL and many more where data reliability is most significant. So, data packet losses during transmit are taken care by receiving acknowledgement of received data from the receiver end. But unlike UDP connection, TCP does not support real life communication like live audio and video streaming. Now let us discuss about the TCP header. Both UDP and TCP use headers as part of packaging the message data for transfer over network communication. TCP header can be minimum of 20 bytes and maximum of 60 bytes with an option for additional data while UDP headers are limited to 8 bytes in size. TCP wrap each data packet with a header containing 10 mandatory fields including of total 20 or more bytes. Each header holds information about the connection and the current data that is being sent. Let us start discussing about the header fields. Source and destination 16 bits port number is the first two parallel fields in the header. The source port number identifies the application process that sends the data and the destination port number identifies the application process that is to receive the data. Now the 32-bit sequence number fields defines the number assigned to the first byte of data contained in this segment. The sequence number is a counter that keep track of every byte sent across the network by a host. The 32-bit acknowledgement number is the next expected byte number. This number is the counter to keep track of every byte that has been received. So, the acknowledgement number field holds the sequence number of the next byte the receiver is expecting to this connection. Now, the header length determine the length of TCP IP header in 4 bits. It is to be calculated at the scale of 4. So, 
that value of header is multiplied by 4. The minimum header length value can be 0, 1, 0, 1, that is 5 in decimal and then multiply 5 with 4 because it is calculated as scale of 4 5 into 4 equal to 20 bytes which is the minimum size of a TCP header the maximum header length can be 1 1 1 and 1 that is 15 in decimal and then multiply 15 with 4 15 into 4 that is equal to 60 bytes which is the maximum size of a TCP header reserved 6 bits for flags 6 flags are there in the TCP header urgent flag URG if this flag is set to 1 then this packet contains some urgent data or if the URG is set to 0 then this packet contains regular data now acknowledgement flag ACK if this flag is set to 1 then this packet carries acknowledgement notification and the acknowledgement 32 bit number is mentioned above push flag p s h if this flag is set to 1 then it informs the receiver ends to forward the data to the application layer without waiting for buffer memory normally it collect bits by bits and store in the buffer before sending to application layer when this PSH the push flag is set to 1 then the particular packet will be sent to the application layer before waiting in the buffer memory now reset flag RST this flag reset the TCP connection if it is to be set to 1 so when the reset flag is set to 1 it is going to reset the connection synchronization flag S Y N it is used for establishing the connection if this flag is set to 1 if this flag is set to 1 then it is the first data bit which the sender wants to send the receiver after establishing the connection now finished flag F I N if this flag is set to 1 then this contain the last bit of data during this period of connection and this session is needed to be terminated now so when the synchronization flag syn is set to 1 then the connection is created or the connection is established and that packet carries the first bit of the data for the connected session and if the finished flag FIN flag is set to 1 that signifies that that packet carries the last bit of data during that period of connected session and the connected session is now required to be terminated window size is 16 bits important tools to manage the flow control so window size is a 16 bit 
field it is a important tool to manage the flow control it advertise the window size in the header of the packet which informs about the maximum capacity of accepting data bits how much data can be accepted by the device through the network that is advertised in the window size field that is a 16 bit field which advertised the capacity of accepting data for a particular host over the network check sum it is a 16 bit field used in order to provide basic protection against transmission error tcp uses checksums in its header checksum fields is used by tcp in its header to control the transmission error the receiving side calculates the checksum on the data whether the same data are received comparing with sender using the same algorithm as the sender that is received and compare its value to the checksum passed in the header therefore it is the part of the error control process of tcp argent pointer is a 16 bit field which holds the range of argent data in case the urg flag is set to 1 it indicates that how much data in the current segment counting from the first bit is argent so it defines the number which must be added to the sequence number to get the number of the last argent byte in the current segment now option and padding this is the last field in the tcp header the tcp segment has an option field that consist of zero or more 32 bits word and provides a way to deal with limitations of the original header the m s s maximum segment size is defined as the largest block of data that a sender using tcp will send to the receiver padding is basically used to make sure that ip packet header has a length that is a multiple of 32 bits it needed because of the verifying length of the option field in the ip header therefore the most significant part of the transmission control protocol is that the data will be passed without any loss from host to another host over the network in case any data packets are damaged or destroyed again those damaged data will be identified and retransmit over the network through the tcp control that is transmission control protocol that is why we have observed in receiving emails websites content that we find all data without any loss comparing to telephone call video call which is controlled and managed by udp connection where we sometimes missed out some 
voice and video message so that is the significant difference between the TCP and UDP connection while we communicate through video and audio call that is conducted by the UDP connection we have missed sometimes some audio voices some video screenshots but we can communicate in real time through the network that is supported by the UDP while UDP we know is a real time process and it does not ensure the data reliability while the TCP use three-way handshaking process and ensure data reliability but it does not support real-time communication that is why when we have used an access emails and web content it takes some more time to access data but we can access full data without any loss when a user sent a mail to another user through the network we access full detail in the mail any part or any page of the mails or the content are never lost during transmit so if any will be lost before we receive the content that will be again retransmit and the full data will be delivered to the receiving host so that is the basic difference between the TCP and UDP connection